Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, movie people. Welcome to us with the Cine Guy. I'm your host, Stephen and Ghoul. Let's talk film. Do, 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 do. Does wherever an Iron Boy Jr. does. Yeah, I went there. We return to the MCU in Iron Boy Jr. No Way Home, in which Peter Parker's secret identity gets revealed, and he cannot fix things by running to his rich guy. So instead, he goes to the closest guy with facial hair he could find, Doctor Strange, and asks him to create a spell that will make everyone forget that he's Spider-Man, just so he can get into MIT. And of course, other things, because seriously, when you get framed for murder that you didn't do, it's kind of bad. But of course, because he's Iron Boy Jr. and is still a teenager, he annoys Strange, keeps messing up the spell, and now there's Rip in the Multiverse, and it's all his fault. I mean, just so we can get into a tech school, I mean, he could have just called the, the admissions office, plead his case. Also, why MIT? Why will Spider-Man be needed in Boston? Nothing happens in Boston. But after trying to plead his case on a bridge, like I said, a phone call goes a long way in this universe, he gets attacked by Dr. Octopus. Yes! Doc Ock, one of the most legendary Spider-Man villains, is now in the MCU, and it's... Alfred Molina as the same character from Spider-Man 2. No, it's literally the same villain. The multiverse is now, has now collided, and Iron Boy Jr. messed things up. So now, all the villains from previous Spider-Man universes have come together into his universe, and he's gotta find a way to fix this mess that he created. We got Auk, Goblin, Electro, Sandman, the Lizard, the Sinister Five. Why not six? I don't know, Mysterio is truly dead in, in this in this universe, and I think the Vulture's just hanging out with Morbius. I don't even know where that fits in the timeline. So after collecting them all, and they can easily return them back to universe, things get back to normal, right? No. Iron Boy Jr. found out that, oh, there's still like an hour and four and like 20 minutes left. Let me try and help these guys because I don't want to send them back to their deaths. Even though it's really none of his business and he could have easily have just gone to school even though people know who he is. You gotta overcomplicate things, man. So to cure them, he traps Doctor Strange in the mirror dimension. Because that's what happens when you allow, allow a teenager in the Avengers. This, like, seriously, just let things happen. Well, you do have to remember why Peter is in this mess in the first place. Mysterio framed him for his own murder. And we know he didn't do it, but people now see him as a killer. And he doesn't want any blood in his hands because people already think he's got enough. So, it's kind of, that's, that's, that's how a hero is, you know? He just wants to do good. It's what his Anne May taught him. Which, a lot of references to a video game because Anne May is in charge of like a, a charity in this movie. But of course, things go wrong and the Green Goblin is unleashed. So he fights Peter and my gosh, one of the most brutal apartment fights. I mean, he's just throwing this guy through walls in the floor. And of course, Aunt May perishes after getting killed by the Green Goblin glider as if Peter hasn't lost enough already. From here, it shows a hero pushed to his limit. He's lost everything and now the only thing he can do is kill the Goblin, right? So, what can be done to bring him back to the light? You have somebody else light the candle. Or should I say, somebody's. Yes, after so much speculation and rumors, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire come back as Spider-Man. It is beautiful and glorious. Oh my gosh. I was just so happy to see them back on screen. Especially Toby. It's been a really long time. Man, seeing those two together just made my inner child, teenager, and adult self just go crazy. Like, their chemistry is so well done that I could have just watched an entire movie of just them having conversations. It was just a lot of fun. And I will say that the one that got the most development was Andrew. He, he, even though it's been years later, he still came into the universe with the guilt of losing Gwen, Gwen Stacy. So when he swooped down and saved MJ after from falling, he finally forgave himself. And after all the chaos, they managed to cure the villains and send them back home. Easy, right? No. So the original spell gets unleashed, ripping like, making it constantly like rips in the space-time continuum, and a bunch of like, other Spider-Man villains from different, like, universe want to come in. And Strange can't keep them in. So, like, how does he save the universe? It's up to Iron Boy Jr. to make the ultimate sacrifice. Peter decides on a new spell. Instead of people forgetting that he's Spider-Man, 
it's time for them to forget who he even is, as if he never existed. Yep. This young boy who's already lost everything is about to lose er everything else for the sake of humanity and the multiverse. It hurts seeing him like lose his best friend, girlfriend, and ally who no longer know who he is. But at the same time, it shows Peter's ultimate growth right there. Spider-Man is supposed to be like the everyday hero. He's not supposed to have like, you know, a wealthy donor or anything like that. No, he's supposed to be struggling with like everyday problems as from teenage to adult life. He's supposed to be broke, struggling to make ends meet, as well as trying to be a superhero at the same time. So Spider-Man is finally the way he's supposed to be. And that homemade suit just looks so beautiful with the bright colors and the inspiration from the past Spider-Man. Exactly how comic book Spider-Man is supposed to be. It's bad enough they took away Uncle Ben from this universe. But now we're here thinking, oh, so this guy is just Tony Stark's little, little, little stepson now? No, he is now officially his own hero the way it was supposed to be since the beginning. Now it's time for him to juggle all that responsibility on his shoulders, which they actually had Aunt May see the great power line. Which, honestly, that was just like the final middle finger given to Uncle Ben in this universe. Seriously, not even like the little, not even that little Easter egg of his like suitcase and far from home was, was touching. It was like, oh, you lost a suitcase. Oh, too bad. Oh, well. So, is this the ultimate comic book movie? I'd say it's the ultimate Spider-Man movie. It has everything that we wanted. Three Spider-Man, nostalgic villains, the acting, and everything was just tremendous, like on Tom Holland's part, and it was just super entertaining. But wait, we can't do the overall yet. What happened to Venom? Tom Hardy got pulled into this universe too, where is he? He's in a bar in Mexico trying to figure everything out, but before he can do anything, he gets pulled back to his own universe, but it does leave a fragment of the Venom symbiote back. Which means we will be getting Bully Tom Holland very soon, and I look forward to his dance. Which reminds me, they did the Spider-Man meme where he's pointing at each other in, in their own fashion right there, but they couldn't have Tom McGuire do his dance or something like that? He couldn't be like, oh yeah, this one time I got possessed, and like I did a weird dance as an emo. I wanted to see the Bully dance. Overall, it is the perfect Spider-Man movie that will make Stan Lee proud. It is fan service done right and such an amazing conclusion to such a, a fun trilogy that I just cannot wait to see what is in store for Iron Boy, I mean Spider-Man. So my final rating is going to be 9.7 spells out of 10 Spider-Men. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a like if you did subscribe to the crew. I sent it for an awesome review. Be sure to follow on the Instagram at Cineguy Steven for more, for more fun reviews. That is at Cineguy Steven. I'll see you there. This is Stephen Gulo signing off. Merry Christmas and happy holidays.